So not Talia Hapan. She's not on here. The workforce one. Why are we just oh Oh, when you test the mic ball over there, don't test it over here. Yeah, test it over there. Be careful with the cable. Be careful. And it's also not going to be the full staff the chair. Or you have to sit in here. All good. Yeah, it's not going to be full now. It's every office. I know. Yes. 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 Oh no.
I would like to gratefully acknowledge the Native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather on today, specifically the Apocalypse, culturally speaking, and as well currently as the, and excuse me, I'm going to butcher some of these names, the Skatawe, the Mugi, the Netego, the Matahoni, the Chikahumoni, the Monaka, and the Pulani. I would also like to take a moment of silence in the recent um, national mass shootings that are happening in our school system. So we can all just take that moment. Thank you all. All right, let's get to it. All right, I'm Shri Soros Burr, the media moderator today. I am on the Mono Alumni Board for Hispanic Access Foundation and the Ola Siaxones Council as well. <laughs> and we're going to start it off. So, Daniel, if you don't mind giving a little intro about who you are, then we'll just pass it on down. Yeah, that's better. Right. Well, buenos dias. Uh, my name is Daniel Salas. Um, I'm from Rio Valley, California. I'm currently working in the prevention and But um, I'm also an alum of um, the programs. Uh, I'm an alum of um, one of the Hispanic Access um, programs, and I had the opportunity to intern at Coronado National Memorial in Southern Arizona for, for 10 weeks. Uh, and um, in engagement with my visitors, you know, visitors, many people actually uh, folks from Mexico coming to to uh, the national uh, in the so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That was back in twenty sixteen and seventeen. Um, so I was born in in this hour in Mexico, and then moved to the United States. Family uh, moved us uh, when I was about six years old. In a resident of the Inland Empire, the Riverside area, for the last twenty some odd years, California home. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Alexa Mendoza Um, I uh, I am a part of this program and I'm doing an internship with the US for a little bit. Um, I was an intern at the San Juan National Forest in Durango, Colorado. Um, I originally was assigned the volunteer and partnership coordinator position. However, my um, my uh, I guess like staffer that was with me became the like, uh, acting for a supervisor. So um, 
he didn't have too much time for me, which is fine. I ended up working with um with his name is Benito Martinez. Um, he was my uh, he was the engineer for the course working with the abandoned mines. And so I was able to work a lot uh, in the field, which was very cool considering that was not my degree. Um, my degree is in communication studies. So uh, being able to do electric shock fishing and a lot of uh, in-field work and hiking and things like that and understanding how the mineral runoff affected um, the lands was very, very cool. And I was very fortunate to be afforded that opportunity considering it wasn't necessarily what I was learning or doing. Um, but after that, um, I worked, I began working with Amazon. Um, I've been with Amazon now for two years. I started out as an area manager in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I was from. And um, I moved up to Olympia, Washington about a year and a half ago now uh, to launch a new building. And I've been there and uh, now an operations manager working uh, with my building at uh, Amazon. And uh, yeah, so before we go. Oh, 2019. Hello, everyone. My name is Natalia. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Rachel Finally, I'm going to Evelyn. Uh, and um, I want to give a shout out because I was uh, self doubting myself as a Latina to be a part of this foundation, but it was a moment of like time to her and shout out to her and shout out to her. But uh, my parents are refugees in Nepal. Um, so I had the privilege of being able to go to Los Angeles, which I acknowledge that, and keep those kinds of opportunities. Um, I actually started off working in warehouses as well and moved to college. Um, so I just wanted to go back and reach out to my school state. Uh, they're known for their uh, for an identity blog. That's a very party school, but what they have is an amazing. Um, so many national forests and uh, amazing staff that I was able to get with the Forest Service. And I started off just kind of working, uh, mean, uh, not with obviously recreation, but I think it's um, through that they were able to see through my uh, job application that I was interested in on an opportunity that um, this book, Fanny, which was a little shadowing of the leadership. Awesome. So, the team has been able to get um, tribal relations um, partner position. So, uh, fall 2021 and summer 2002 was uh, tribal relations. You got it. Okay, let's get to it. Um, oh, by the way, I was on some intern in 2017 who feels like forever ago for the National Online Tribal System, so my communications for the year long program. I love you. All right, so. How has this narrative impacted your growth within con uh, conservation? Specifically, what I mean by that is like historically, the decision making process in the field of conservation has left um, diversity and vulnerable like communities out of this conversation. So, how does this in particular um, impact your experience? I think um, for me personally, this internship opportunity really showed me what was available. Um, growing up in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, we like I didn't see a lot of opportunities for conservation, for nature, for um, really anything of that um, field. And so when the email came through that this was a possibility, it was one of those things I thought I had to take and I had to jump on. And um, I feel like what this program does is provide a, a door really for the possibility of what can you can become and what you can do. Because I didn't, I, I always knew like state and local government was a thing, but I didn't understand how you would transition into like federal government. 
and to know that that's a possibility and to know that there's an organization actively working towards that goal to get more Latinos and into federal jobs, that's a really big thing to celebrate. So I think this program is, has really opened my eyes to possibilities and what else is available to me. Because growing up, sometimes you think, oh, it's just, I get a job with a big corporation and I work my way up the corporate ladder and that's my life, right? Like that's where it begins and that's kind of where it ends. And to know that there are more possibilities and, and the world is so much bigger than just what you see or what you like grow up with is, is a really, really positive thing to take for us. Some of the questions I've seen, pero uh, after the que pienso que es importante tener programas como este es es este tener um, caras familiares uh, I think it's really important that we have familiar people, right? In these groups, there's often times the fact that Nacionales or forests can be very intimidating for the communities because of the amount of rules that are the, uh, to engage, right? Um, you don't know whether you can walk in this place or if that area is accessible. Um, even si se puede llevar a abuelos, se puede llevar a los niños, right? That we, uh, the rules can sometimes not be clear. And so having that familiar face makes this less intimidating. And, and then that leads to uh, access, right? Uh, of our spaces. It leads to, um, to more engagement, more, uh, more. Uh, ownership, right, of, of the public community. It ensures that that the uh, that the awareness, right, is, is increased for uh, operation spaces that I mentioned, right, uh, the Latino community is committed right, to uh, to the preservation of the environment, um, but that like these spaces need to be also present uh, in these spaces in. Uh, at, at the decision making tables so that uh, so that uh, we can we can continue that that legacy right it's part of the history of preservation for the Latino community is is immemorial it's, it's been existent since before the creation of Latinidad right um uh, and so to continue that legacy of, of generations of preservation is important that these these uh, these spaces are hard to do. So I think uh, these these opportunities, these internships, these uh, these access uh, these pathways uh, make that uh, make that possible in a space that historically has not been um, uh, open to to uh, communities. personal levels that these experiences have provided you or at least guided you towards. Because that mental health thing is so true, like in this aspect. Um yeah, I would like to hear more about this. Yeah, um so I'm just gonna go ahead and share it. Uh, 
once you get started with the program, um, I have a very low cost of living at the end of the work year where you can probably just go to school and not feel like I fit in in a very privileged role as well, where it was a lot of like, I went to private and ski industry and all this kind of stuff. None of those are how they really acknowledge me and being a kid in their kids was, is that okay? Um, and just being happy with unconditional being there and spending and um, other tools like um, learning how to keep your feet on the ground, you know, take a day by day and not for being like, you know, because that, that and I'm going to get like extreme because when you get into like a government position with bureaucracy, where people are just kind of that was so beautiful. Now I'm tearing up right now. Um, no, but thank you. Um, I I think going off of that too. I think the greatest thing that this has offered me is community. Um, I've always felt. Um, I didn't. I wouldn't always feel like I belong. Um, because. I didn't know. I don't speak Spanish fluently. I understand it better than I can speak it. And it's, I've always felt in my community like I wasn't Hispanic enough for Hispanics and I wasn't white enough for white people. And I didn't really know where I belonged. And this organization really offered me a sense of community and friendship. And um, some of the, the girls that I did my internship with back in 2019, they're still my friends. And we went on a camping trip back in 2021 20, or something like that. But um, it has offered me a sense of knowing like I belong, and I think that is a very special thing that my other work places ne didn't necessarily bring me and didn't afford the opportunity. So I think community is a very big thing. So I'm very grateful for that. In terms of like professional skills, right, that, that I think this uh these spaces provided, oftentimes um you know, students like come out of university with um, theoretical skills, right? Like you, you learn how to process information, but oftentimes uh, lo que falta es la uh, aplicarlo, right? Like being able to apply it. So like they, these internships allow, uh, these partners allow people to get their hands dirty, right? And, and, uh, and, and like learn like the actual process of what it takes to get a sign, right? Like, like a simple sign um, saying like, this is this is um, so-and-so park, and like, this is these are the people of this area, and like, this is why it's geologically important, right? Um, and I had the opportunity to do that, right? Uh, like create um, uh, marketing brochures, but in, in, in Spanish for uh, for this national park, right? Or the national park. And so, um, and so, like my my supervisor, um, he he encouraged me right to 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 play around with different media of communication, right? So creating videos and um, using social media and, and print media, right? Which is so really important. Um, and so, so really, I think just like that, um, uh, like kind of um, at least for my right, it was like kindling the curiosity of like how. Uh, communication um, plays a role in, in, in accessing these spaces and, and, and like using the professional tools necessary right to to um, to get that job done and getting the word out about about these spaces and then actually I wanted to go back real quick to one thing that was mentioned right it's like employment right um, I think you know like as a as someone who grew up right like from from very little here you um, we, we kind of sometimes grow up with this idea of like there's certain people who are allowed to go out and like take years of like oh, I'm exploring myself and I'm gonna go out in the outdoors and and you know live in the forest and um and oftentimes you know like that comes with a level of, of privilege of being able to to potentially do that without the safety net of employment right without the safety net of, of benefits and so these internships, right? Like not only provide you with like the, the, that professional like avenue to a secure job in the future, right? But like on the spot, right? It, it, it gives you like uh, oftentimes right the, the like the salary, right? To 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 be able to to sustain yourself, right? Because oftentimes our families aren't able to that's 
to you know cough up you know a couple thousand dollars for you to seem like an exploratory journey in the middle of Wyoming, right? Like that doesn't exist uh, oftentimes for for our for someone who does, right? And so uh and so these spaces uh permit us uh, uh that 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 space for for generations right to to of young people to to explore and to and to find that purpose right and to find that um um you know that that next step yeah that was a really great point um i definitely could have not taken the internship had it not paid not only like me to be there but to give me a housing stipend a travel stipend a plane ride to get there and back my family thought I was crazy. <laughs> like you're the, you who do you you don't even know these people. But uh, but my greatest feedback I still have all the time is the community. Um, and so the random roommate that gave me Ashley and Perez Rivera is still my friend to this day. We actually just went to Puerto Rico last week and met with other half um like interns and like LCC people. So it's always such a great pleasure to me. The groups that it brings together around the nation is every time I travel, I'm calling Evelyn, like, who's in town? I'm about <laughs> to go to Texas. Who can I meet up? It really is such a great community that they've created and continue to sustain on both the personal and professional level. Okay, let's keep on going. We don't need to shed tears. <laughs> um, all right. So in your experience, how have the barriers of access you or your peers encountered in your pursuit of a career with the federal government or elsewhere? So even if it's not you, you can speak about it with other interns or other people, because there are multiple internship programs that are affiliated with federal and state agencies that HAP does have a relationship with. Oh yeah, I can totally repeat it. I know. It was a little... So what are some of the barriers that you might have come across or maybe some of your peers have come across in in um in pursuing the careers within federal government or even like state agencies pretty much like in our field right whether it's in conservation archaeology like communication but overall in this field that we're all talking about so i would say one of the barriers i faced was um i did my internship when i was still in school um, I did my junior year, and so I still had another year to complete my degree. And then once I completed my degree, uh, we, we were given the uh, hiring authority letter um, once you completed the internship, which basically um, gave you two years um, to have direct hiring authority with the with any of the uh, uh, federal agencies. And so that was in 2020 that I got my letter, and then COVID hit, and so um, you know you you I was given the letter and. Time, time didn't really permit for like the opportunity to go and uh, dive into that. Uh, it was more of like this is available and it's a paper and it exists, but it was kind of difficult to navigate that um, the website and navigate how to like use that letter and if I apply, what does that look? What does that look like? So it was. Um, I think it's a, a bigger like. I think like you have the the higher authority and, and like that means something, but it, as far as how you like apply it was kind of a big barrier. Um, and like it wasn't necessarily the field that I was going into. Like I didn't know, and I also was like too. Um, I didn't. Sometimes it, it came down to like pay not to pay, right? Like you were going in and and they were going to start you at a GS level, and that was like about fifteen dollars an hour, whereas. If I went into the private sector, I could make more money doing not necessarily the work that I wanted to do, but I made more money um, doing something else. So that was also like an, an issue for me too. So uh, I think those are the two big barriers that I faced. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, just inflation in general, having to visit so many places is very expensive. Um, I will still say that some people are going to try to sell you short. But not to just not allow that because um, within the agency, you're navigating through a lot of different personalities, people who have different aspects, like uh, someone that works tribal relations, an archaeologist, recreation, people who work at the public land through different lenses. And you just really have to learn how to respect everyone's 
votes without getting your politics involved in that. You know, you just gotta go and learn how to work with one another and really be open minded because I would say that one of the barriers is that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say it that the board Zero does tend to have a good old boys club. You know, that it was difficult, and even Randy Moore said it, um, the chief of the Forest Service, that it was hard for him to go to places that were a little bit more remote because they were not used to seeing people of color, women, right? But um, I think that besides that, it's like there's a lot of animals not within that room. Um, I think one of the challenges on, on my end was uh, a little more practical, but it was um, if you work for the federal government, you understand is the long onboarding process. Um, my internship specifically was 10 weeks long. Uh, and so 10 weeks is not a whole lot of time. Um, and so for me, when I um, when I arrived, you know, I was told like, okay, you'll you'll have access to the computer soon. We just need you onboarded. Um, I didn't get access to my computer until week nine of my internship. And so in that time, luckily my my park had a um, non-official <laughs> uh, computer that I was able to use to, to access email and, and, and you know, do all the things, right? Um, but, you know, that, that onboarding process is, is just ridiculously long. And so it definitely, uh, at least at the very beginning, right, like we're just kind of like waiting, like, okay, is it going to happen today? Is it not going to happen today? Um, so at least on, on, on my end, right, like that was one of the, the biggest things that we took a long, long onboarding process. So, um, so uh, and if we can if we can work on the onboarding process, please like, <laughs> let's get that figured out. Okay, no hold on. <laughs> um, yes, sir. I think it's um, I did I did personally experience this, but um, I know a lot of my my colleagues uh, and folks currently in uh, in the federal government, right, either in park service or or. National Forest, right, is um, folks, professionals seem to have like lack full skills to engage with Latinos in the outdoors. <laughs> like people forget how to talk to other people who don't look like them. <laughs> and for some reason, they just have this like, like they just want to ask you questions, right? That like, that just sometimes don't even make sense, right? But all like I think there really does need to be um, this um, this uh, type of education within um, federal employees to like like how to properly engage with with other professionals in in their own field, right? Like people who are just as educated or just as you know as versed in 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 their their fields, and and so I think that is like a big challenge of like why like federal spaces like federal jobs right or, or like federal employment can be really challenging for uh for bipod folks right it is is um like folks don't know how to engage with you because you're a person of color for some reason right and so uh and it's, so it's, it's it's really about like like how do we make these spaces um you know, I understand, right? Like, like yes, like, I'm a person of color, right? But that doesn't mean that I'm, um, like, I'm like 100% like totally different, right? From from what is currently um, happening, right? And so, um, so yeah, I think it's really just like let's also work on on educating our federal employees to to to, to engage with with that. And you said it right on the head. Okay, like in my internship, I had to call someone to get fired within their first two weeks, especially because of that. Just because like the employees there, like most biologists in general, they don't like humans. They just like, want to be on the field. They want to work with the animals. Like that's why they have the job that they have. But like add a little mix of like bipod with that, it's like it gets a little strange, right? They absolutely do need training, and I think a big part of that one intern who did get let go so quickly into her internship was that there was a lack of like how to train this person, how to communicate with this person. You know, this is a whole new field. That was her first time job. She had just moved away from her family. There's like a lot of things happening. Um, and that could have had a different outcome for said intern. 
I, I think another thing too is that there's this expectation within federal and state agencies, regardless if you're in forest, you're in fish, you're in agriculture, whatever, that you have to do like six internships. Right? I don't know about you guys, I did at least three internships post hoc. And it's like, that's not sustainable. Absolutely not. Like, I can't keep getting paid like this minimum wage status, but then have it under my belt because this is like, it's almost like the hazing system for what is federal agencies. And it's not realistic. And it is a lot of like what you said before, service, like the, the good old boys club. It is like how you, like who you know, and also how can you work that robot system, right? Has anyone tried to apply out USA jobs here? Anyone raise a hand? Yeah, how hard is that? That's really difficult. You got to pass a robot before you get to the regional director, before you get to your hiring director. That's like three things in there. So difficult. Anyway, <laughs> obviously, I could talk about this all the time, but we got other questions to go through. All right, so. What are some aspects of what? Oh, okay. So, um, in what ways has Mono addressed some of these barriers that we kind of just discussed about? Any y'all want to answer that? Love it. Here we go. Passage of all. I think like, like it, it goes back to that, that first um, point that I made, right? It's just having familiar faces in spaces is really, uh, really, uh, really critical, right? Like, um, you know, oftentimes, like, if you're the first face, you're having to do that education, right? For, for folks, right? Whether you like it or not, right? We are, um, we're both forced to be the um, representation of our, of our communities, right? And that, um, you know, like even though that, that responsibility is very difficult, right, for for one individual, right, it's also very critical, right, to to um, to you know change that that narrative, right, within within um, federal spaces and so federal federal job um, spaces, right, to um, to get people to put their beer, right, like yes, we're we're here and we're interested in these types of jobs and we're interested in uh, in, in making these spaces um, accessible, I think uh, Mano has done a really, uh, really great job, right? In, in, uh, in putting folks right in, in places where not only they can have uh, long-term employment, right, uh, but then be be that um, uh, that that bridge, right, to to then support that next generation of interns, so the, the next generation of, of, of professionals. Um, so I think just right, right off the bat, I think that's that's um, uh, one way that, that Mano has really just uh, advances the, the, the space, right? And being able to bring in these diverse thoughts and understanding that our community, um, they uh, recreate different, right? Like Barrios Nacionales, like in, in Latin America, are very different than they are here in, in the States, in, in the US, right? And so, like, how do we? Um, uh, how do we bring in like the, the mentality of, of like engaging um, with the outdoors rather than just like in them, right? Like it's not just like we're not just going for for the day, right? Like there's there's intentionality, right? To to us being present and, and, and preserving um, these these spaces, right? Like not like as it was mentioned by Pastor uh, Cesar, right? Like like our communities have this long history of of like you like medicinal like usage of plants, right? And and engaging with with the animals and the plants and and the mountains and, and the cerros, right? Um, um because we're in a tie, right? And so like I think the, like one of the ways that, that Mano has been critical is just is starting to change that perspective of that we're not just going out for the day like it's Disneyland, right? It's like like these are spaces that we're like intimately connected to, right? So um, uh, that that require both um, our understanding, but also us uh, um, uh, us to to engage with them in, in a different way, like not just as like uh, as a playground, right? But as 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 like true care care people. I think Mana has done a good job of this through their um, their continuous emails that they send about different um, opportunities 
that are available. So I think um, whether it is like um, federal positions, they also do a great job of partnering with the nonprofits and other um, coalitions that exist in within the conservation field. Um, and I personally love those emails because I love to see like what's available to me, where they're at, like if this is something like, and it really kind of even opens it up further because it continuously shows more of what exists like and it's not always just the same thing it's a lot of variety and uh, for, for various positions whether it be like biology or communication or archaeology like it's so vast and I just thoroughly appreciate that piece of it because it really does make a difference and um you know whether it's you personally or if you're able to send that in, to another person right it is getting to the right audience and it is getting to the, the right person so I think that's a really big piece uh, this is um, I also want to recommend using us this platform, right? For us to speak, you know, like, we got paid to speak, to like meet each other. So the emails, you know, as, as annoying as, as I might be with those emails, they are great opportunities. It's a lot, it's a lot of emails, but it's scholarships, it's jobs. Grants, it's like, oh, hey, we're doing a research paper in it, like we're down, and oh, we have a board opening up, who wants to join? Oh, we have this new council coming in, you want to be a part of it? Like, it's oh, we have pastors coming in, into your town, you want to like go meet them up for dinner? A bunch of different opportunities. I also want to state, like, Mono as a program is kind of broken down, at least with federal agencies, in my experience, like the tokenization of like who we are as staff or as interns to these agencies. Um, I know when I first started, it was like just the beginning, but now hearing from other interns, it's changed a lot. Like rather than just being this check mark or like a press, like a good PR press for the agencies, we're like actual people now. Right, and there's like actual representation and I remember one time in this uh, work meeting where Afghan and I were trying to advocate for doing like marketing for, uh, what was it, like uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. And one of our coworkers had made a comment like, oh, we're gonna start doing April Fool's Day too. And we were just like, ooh, okay, okay, ouch. So, you know, we had to sit him down and have like a very uncomfortable conversation. But hearing now from other interns on the field, because yeah, so you know, so you like that was a while ago, you know, seven years ago almost. Um, it's I hear it so much different, and I'm so happy to see what Mama has done to kind of hold supervisors accountable, hold agencies accountable, making sure that our interns feel safe, making sure our interns feel recognized in the spaces that they are. Um, like I said, I talk about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. What are okay? These are good. What are some things you think that still need change in like both our program and also like on the federal agency side or state agency side? Like, what are some changes that are still missing? Because it's a lot of work. I know we all got a lot of guesses. Let's share them. I think that we just need to really hire like. All times so of different people, more creative people in the field, too. I don't know, the people who just follow a cookbook recipe like XYZ. It's like, no, like, let's get some people that can color outside the lines. Because one thing that I noticed, like I keep saying, it, when you call that bureaucracy, a lot of people, like, so I'm not, so I'm not, 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 they don't want to speak up for what is south for it. I totally agree with her. There were really people like trying to like put me down, but I was just like, um, why, why, why? You know, like they do that all that like sometimes people, you know, that that type of energy, but you can't you can't have those types of people in office. How do you get people that just can't help you? There's a man that you invite you, you know, because people are very competitive and honestly, that's not what it's about. It's about worried for one another, you know. Yeah, I'm kind of piggybacking off that. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily say like this is for the federal government or like the agencies in general, but going for like the culture, I think really diminishing the limited beliefs that we have. I think so often we think like, oh, this, this is the capacity at which I can exist, or like this is all that I'm allowed to have. And like, like, um, like we said a little bit earlier, like 
ask for more, like be more, want more, because you're worth that. Like, and so many times we hear like, oh, like I'm gonna live at myself, or I'm not gonna celebrate myself, or I'm not gonna advocate for myself. Like, no, you do that. You be that person because no one's going to do it for you. No one's gonna speak up for you except you. And so like really like hearing that limiting belief and that really small voice that's telling you, no, you can't, you say wrong, yes, you can. And I'm here and I'm going to make my presence known. And uh, that's the biggest thing that I want to challenge and continuing to challenge in our in our community and, and just be that person because that's who you are. Um, I think um, one of the things that that can change, right, is um, so obviously there's some great opportunities, right, to um, to work with with uh, with the federal government, right, in providing uh, internships. Uh, that, that that then create you know a, a lifelong um, careers right but um, I think one of the changes could be like more opportunities for uh, uh, like direct hiring authority right and so, so for those who aren't familiar the direct hiring authority um, basically permits someone to to uh, it gives them kind of like a priority in terms of, of hiring uh, for uh, for like an actual job from, from the internship, right? So essentially jumping from an internship into a, a job, right? Well, um, rather than, than kind of going through like the normal long-term, you know, long, long process. Um, so I think now that the uh, model is like really well established, right? Like there's uh, there's now this reputation, right? For the the organization with the federal government and, and, uh, and the federal, National Park Forest Service, right, to to allocate more uh, direct hiring authority positions, right, to uh, to programs uh, like my own, the countless other right programs that uh, um, that are putting in really competent and uh, and uh, individuals, right, in, in these, these positions because you know, kind of like in my own sense, right, like immigrants get the job done, and so. Um, and so, so an opportunity to 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 then you know uh, essentially fast track folks into into long term uh, long term careers. I think is is very important to to not only change like the individual spaces, right, but the, the culture of the federal government as a whole. And so, uh, so yeah, more more direct hiring authority uh, positions allocated to Hispanic backpacks and all of the great programs that that are now. Actually, a, a really great point to that. Um, I know we have a lot of people like online or on the field, but how many people's like internship or direct hiring authority was affected by COVID? Raise your hand. Oh, just me? Okay. Oh, George. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, there's some other folks probably online, but a lot of us couldn't, and they, they still like didn't come up with a solution for those that kind of miss that two year span that we're allowed to use it because COVID was like two to five years. I don't know, it feels like forever now. But that's a really big uh point. I also want to mention like having full representation that is the diaspora of Latinidad. You know, I feel we're missing a lot in terms of like Afro Latinidad and Asian Latinidad on the field. I'm I'm very fortunate for the work that I get to do. I know a lot of us are, but we definitely need to use our privilege to speak up for other people who are still trying to get into um, those industries or into them, right? So this is like the space for us to do that in the way that we can. And anytime you guys have feedback or ways to help with that, please feel free to like email out. They're so responsive. I know they are because I email them at least like five times every day. And we have like four different, um, we have four different communication platforms that I, I enjoy But they come over <laughs> All right, let's uh let's take on a little brighter note. I kind of want to know what each of yours like aha moment was in your internship. Um, and then we're gonna like open up QA to everyone. But uh just as a, an example or more of an explanation, aha, an aha moment is a, a realization like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be, or like, yeah, like, oh my god, I get it now. Or ooh, yeah, yeah, I'm in the right place. Like, you know, it could be. You know, anything, kind of like Valid. Valid is like any type of word. 
And I, I don't want to say this name out loud, but my, my, my first mentor was awesome. He's like, he told the best advice. He said, well, Matt, he's like, people like to think they, they're more important than they really are. And I'm like, well, oh, really? Like, <laughs> like, after that, I just, you know, you're going to, you're going to come across an interesting person that way. But um, I feel like part of my job was being a part time therapist. So people would just tell me their problems. I'm like, aha. Like, you know, they're just all like kids, honestly. It's like, oh, it's like, it's really fun. So, uh, again, yeah, that was like a calm moment. Like, they, I don't know if they made that statement, but there's no such thing as fake it till you make it. But so many people really did fake it, man. You're just like, aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I'd say the the entirety of the inter internship was kind of that for me. When I got the email alerts, really, I went to the list of the places, and I saw Durango, Colorado, and I knew my whole heart that it was mine. I I don't I didn't know how I did, but I just knew I was meant to be there. And I applied, and I didn't get an interview, and then I was crushed. I was like, God, how could you do this to me? I know this is mine. And I was, I was like, okay, well, guess not. And so then I just kept applying to different internships, and I kept getting told no. Um, and then finally, but funny enough, it came back to me. They said, oh, do you have an internship that I want you to apply for? For drink in Colorado. And I was like, mm, I don't know one anymore. <laughs> And that was so interesting, ego speaking. Um, but I said, okay, she had an interview. And uh, again, that's my point. And so I think um, for me, like, it always felt very, like, very true in my heart what this was and what this was going to be. And uh, I didn't really understand what it would grow into, but to see what it has become and to see that it has led to this moment is a very beautiful thing. Um, and so I think that aha moment is is just it can be from the very beginning and just knowing that and trusting that is very valuable. Well, it's funny I got that interview, but I did not get that position. <laughs> and then I was like, oh. they're like, you might be like, like seriously. And then I'm like, I'm chill on that, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But shout out to Adam, man. She's like, man, do it. <laughs> um, for me, uh, I think uh, it's, it's gonna be a little more difficult to one. It's not a common, but it's a. I uh, growing up in Southern California, right, with like um, with an immigrant family, right, in an immigrant family. Um, you know, we even on Saturday, like maybe in December, January, like in National Forest, right, and like. Every once in a while, you almost have a plan, yeah, right? But like, I didn't really get exposed to like, like the true like backwoods, like outdoor, like you're like sleeping on the ground, um, until I almost graduated from college, and it was because I happened to have a job as like a, a computer person, right? Um, um, and one of our bosses was like, hey, you know, I organize, like I, you know, I go hiking, man, like. Um, to these all these places, it's like whoever want to come, and so I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. And we would do, um, you know, 10, 12, 12 mile hikes, um, you know, and we'd like we'd leave work at like 8 p.m. and um, to like camp out for like two hours to then be at the trailhead the next morning at two in the morning, three in the morning, right? Like it was like wild stuff. Um, that I'm like, I don't even know how my body did that. I'm just doing my body now. <laughs> Um, so like I didn't really get exposed to like that type of the outdoors until like much later. And so going out to Coronado National Memorial uh, and, and engaging with my first immigrant family, like like uh, at, at the national park, like they showed up, they were like, no sabemos que se puede hacer aquí, like este, que tienen in the center, and so like we just like we were there for like like two three hours. But my kid was like, if you can go hike up here, and then we can take you down to like this cave that's like you can back down, and then you can learn a little bit about like the, the indigenous people of this area here, and like like we were there for like a while, just like going through everything that the park had to offer for them, and then um like for me that was the aha moment of like. Like, even though my parents, I know that they were like on the phone telling me, like, yeah, 
of your operation, no matter what you're doing. Like you really shouldn't be a leader if you're not going to think about how diversity affects others. And so I think like really sitting in that truth and understanding the impact and the um and the overall like influence you have in that role, like be true to that. And and if you don't understand it, like go out of your way to understand it and uh, really, really mean, really mean what you're saying. So um, and if you're not, then reflect on that and ask yourself why, because a lot of this is just really it goes internally and understanding self. And if you're not willing to look at that piece, I don't think you should be in that role. So sit in your office. I have two things. So first one is patience, right? As as mentioned previously, like if you um you know there was an intern who was dismissed two weeks into the internship, like they probably don't even have the time to learn everyone's things by then, right? And so patience for someone who probably never has experienced um uh, spaces like this before, right? It, is someone's like just like literally starting from, from scratch to to understand the, the plethora of, of opportunities that are available, right? So so patience with with um with the folks who, who are coming through your doors, right? Um the other is Google. <laughs> Google stuff, right? Like you don't have to rely on your one like personal color employee to teach you everything about somebody's culture, right? Like there's um like you know I, I, like you get a uh, kind of step um uh, go out of your way to to learn about uh people's heritage about people's um view of the world right and 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 uh and actively engage with 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 the community right that that um that you want to see in uh in uh in your spaces I would have to say that they need to start recruiting more people from community college. There are a lot of great people who don't have an opportunity to become a four year. Um, there's, uh, I would also like to say not to pick at the biology people, but we can't really consider a sociology or cultural anthropology board um, because these people were trying to be like, oh, you watch Google? Like, what are you talking about? I don't watch Google. No, like, you know, they're very, um, being watched by the media sometimes and trying to like get that onto me and um yeah stick it with the audio brother. <laughs> I still have to say when you take a DEI journey, right? Civil board, uh your civil board real easy, not that expensive anymore. Got one minute left. So I um any other questions before we wrap up? Yeah, George. One minute left. Yeah, go for it. Oh man. So here's the thing. Um two minutes. Okay, I don't think I can finish two minutes. So a lot of times when they got those emails for Francisco, I, I couldn't take those meetings because I was out of field working. Um, but you know, sitting here listening to your experience as a model online experiences that were immediate to me, um, I couldn't sort of help but think about you know interns in sort of the broader sort of capitalist framework and I took notes you know for all those days that I wanted to join the meetings I won't have enough time to finish but um to me it seems like you know whenever I mentioned the possibility of wanting to get into the current system it seemed like I was wiggling for for breadcrumbs um people would complain that you know I'm asking for too much um, almost like if I wasn't struggling I wasn't doing it right and that was kind of painful but um I know there are practical limits to what half can do and where half can sort of get us. Um, my question for you all is what do you think is a clear course of action to get more Latinos into the federal system so that it doesn't seem like we're, you know, just breaking even, like we're actually making strides to, to work our way to work with forest service, fish and wildlife, et cetera. We're gonna have to leave about tonight. No. Yeah. That's a good question. Anyone? 
Yeah, so again, right, is is like the, the federal government just needs to uh need to acknowledge right the value of these these uh these, these programs and, and provide those those uh, uh direct pathways right to uh to future employment, right? Um direct hiring authority, right? Um um yeah, like DI training, right? All of all of these things are um ways that like just really change to change the, the culture and how people see their their employment status, and, uh, and then be able to then provide those opportunities for for internships. I know we have that. I think also like um, removing the oversimplification of the removing the, com the complexity of the actual federal government's hiring process. I think that's a really big one, and I think when we can tackle that, then we'll be able to sit here and say, okay, this is not going to be like ten. Uh, you know, things in red tape is going to be, I can get this and I can apply and I can go from there. So really just simplifying the system itself, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, $40,000 in the GS5 does not do it anymore. Um, I just want to thank everyone that's here to all about participating today. And thank you to everyone that's watching online. Know that you can just as easily hit up your Congress representatives and be like, hey, these programs like this matter. Please continue funding, right? To make these opportunities available that historically and continue to not be as accessible to our communities and other BIPOC communities. Um, and for more information on that, you can go to HispanicAccess.org. You can follow us on social. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you for the time.